Greetings, my friends. I am Dictor Van Doomcock, the future ruler of Earth, and today we are doing a super chat square up for the Inquisition last night. I promised that I would go ahead and do this, and I am good to my word. We leave no super chats behind in the Inquisition or on my channel. I hope that you guys will enjoy this mini version of the show last night, where I will answer your questions along with Harvey Cthulhu. Hello, guys. Happy to join in and help out in the effort. Shall we go ahead and end the first one? Let's go ahead and do it, Harvey. Some nobody with a $2 super chat. Thank you, my friend. Says, that's right. It's ideological blackmail, 100% that. Yes, we spoke a lot about uh, ideological blackmail last night, and uh, he's quite correct. Thank you for that $2 super chat, some nobody. Tim Riggs, with a $5 super chat, thank you, Tim, says, Can we get Kurtzman charged for necrophilia? He keeps effing the already dead corpse of Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's not only effing the corpse, but he's, like, tried to sell, like, the organs, you know? Like, put them on the black market, but the thing has been dead too long. And not even the Chinese uh, black marketeers want to buy these particular organs. So, I don't know what to tell you, Tim. Uh, I, I believe he should be charged for uh, franchise necrophilia. And hopefully, uh, his crimes are about to catch up with him as Sherry Redstone will cancel this nonsense and get back to making real Star Trek. Thank you, Tim. Kilroy was here. Kilroy is here. Kilroy will be here again with a $5 super chat. Actually, two uh, $5 Super Chats in a row. Thank you, my Legionnaire Kilroy, who says, Honestly, Kirk's death isn't nearly as disrespectful as people make it out to be. The only part that I think could have been done better is if Picard didn't bury him on the barren planet with only his Starfleet badge to mark his grave. No, it's a, it's a crappy death. I mean, he should have been in charge. He should have been uh, on the bridge of a ship going down in flames, uh, saving a lot of people instead of fighting on a jungle gym with, you know, Soren, fucking, you know, Malcolm McDowell, you know, H.G. Wells from time after time. Come on. It was fucking ridiculous. That whole goddamn thing was cheap and shoddy, and I, I, I refuse to even acknowledge that it happened. Certainly not with my own eyes. Not at all. But thank you, Kilroy was here for the two $5 Super Chats and for being a hell of a legionnaire and a member of the Common Man cast. You rock, Kilroy. You rock. Jigfigjififi with a $5 Super Chat. Thank you, Jigfigjififi. Says, you must spend one month in a room with one. Mikey Spock or Ray from Star Wars? Choose. Ah, uh, that's easy, Ray. Ray. I'd bang Ray. I, I'd chat up Ray. I mean, you know, she's not hard to look at. She's kind of kind of attractive, really. Has a kind of a pixie, pixie quality, you know? Mikey Spock is an obnoxious pig that would make every single moment of my time in confinement with her a living hell. That's no choice at all, Jig Fifi. Thank you. I would pick Brie Larson. Bonus! I would pick Brie Larson for a month in the room over Mikey Spock. Uh, because I'd bang her too. <laughs> you're, you're kind of a, you're kind of a a, 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 a mimbo, aren't you? A mimbo? A male bimbo? Uh, well, I mean that's that's covered in male. That's co <laughs> that's covered in man. I mean, you know, that's uh, by the definition. Yes. Uh, hail Jigafi Jigafifi, and thank you for that. That's a funny question. Adam Wofford with a, th a $2 super chat. Thank you, Adam. Says so season three of STD will be ripe off Andromeda series. Um, yeah, uh, it, it sounds like it, except Andromeda was entertaining and written by competent people. Uh, STD will not be. STD season three is going to be a hideous, ugly, stupid affair. Well, just like STD Seasons 1 and 2, really, when you get right down to it. Really, when you get right down to it, we already know that because we've seen it, haven't we, boy? Uh, so thank you, Adam Wofford. Mark C. with a $5 super chat. Thank you, Mark C. Says, if I buy a Gwyneth Paltrow candle and lick it, have I given her oral? Um, It depends on, uh, on, on where she kept the candle, how she made the candle, how she formed the candle. <laughs> Is it kind of lumpy? Does it have a 
uh, an odd scent? Uh, if so, uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, but you know what? If, if you lick it with that intent, sure. You know, it's kind of like clapping your hands and saying you believe in fairies and Tinker Bell uh, comes back to life. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, it's, it's possible. It's possible, Mark C. Thank you, sir, uh, for the super chat and for all of your help with my channel. You, sir, rock. Some nobody with a $2 super chat. Hail some nobody says big talk from a fat has been from the 30s. Uh, geez, I'm trying to remember what this was about. What, what was he about? Big talk from a fat has been from the 30s. Uh, what, a, what, uh, from the 30s? Who could that be? I'm trying to think. What are you t- are talking about? Uh, Patrick Stewart? That he, he was from the 30s? Was he, boy, is that, that old? Shit, I guess he is. I guess he is. You're talking about Patrick Stewart there or some nobody. Wow. Well, yeah, he's, he's, he's talking big. He's, he's talking, you know, he's, he's, uh, you know, sharing his, uh, political opinions. He's got the right to do so. Um, I, I don't give a shit, honestly. Uh, what I care about is, uh, the actual practical effect of this incompetence and a lack of respect and caring for fans that will manifest in Star Trek puke hard being, some of the worst shit I've ever seen in my life. I, I, I'm calling it. I think, I think, I think it's coming. I think it's coming, and I think it's going to be awful. Lord Tony Accardo with two more twenty Swedish Krone super chats. He already did two two hundred Swedish Krone super chats, and then he did uh, two twenty Swedish Krone super chats. So I mean, ultimately, and didn't say a word. Didn't say a word, but he did join the channel membership. Lord Tony Accardo. I uh, I don't know if that was your intent or if somehow something went awry. I, I don't know, sir. But I, I thank you for the support, regardless of whether you, uh, you know, said anything or not. I, I really appreciate it. <laughs> it was very generous. I mean, a, a total of 440 Swedish krone. <laughs> all told. Uh, thank you, Lord Tony Accardo. <coughs> thank you. <coughs> Damn it. Wait, you swallow wrong? Uh, <coughs> I don't know, man. It's just all these damn allergies and everything. It's just, uh, this time of year sucks. Uh, thank you, Lord Tony Accardo. God bless you, my friend. Thank you for being a part of this channel now. And I hope to see you uh, tonight at the uh, Arch Villain Only. Um live stream 8 30 tonight central time uh this it this this i this i this that's tricky to read with a five dollar super chat thank you this i is i is this i this i jeez you can't really say that it makes you kind of see weird things and geometric shapes that uh, don't exist in colors that no human has ever seen welcome to my dimension yes thank you rv uh this i this i this this is this is this. Maybe that's the way to pay it. Uh, says Star Trek Picard was doomed from the word go. Oh, and Stargate Universe still sucks as a show. Yeah, I've heard that. I- I'm on still on SG One. I never seen any of the Stargate shows except SG One, and then uh, Stargate Atlantis. I hear is good. Uh, my wonderful Legionnaire Tamarox uh, purchased me the entire series. What a great guy Tamarox is, and uh, I love him to death. A great fan of Nightman as well. Uh, we share that. Haven't heard from him in a while. Tamarox, if you're listening to this, get in touch with me. Haven't heard from you in a long time, bro. Uh, thank you. This, I, this, I, this. Uh, Darkstar57 with a 499 Super Chat. My friend, you are too kind, sir. Welcome back. Welcome back. And Darkstar57 says, I said it once. I will say it again. It breaks my heart how quickly our childhood heroes sell their integrity to make a few silver coins. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. It's heartbreaking. It's absolutely heartbreaking. Uh, Dark Star 57, and I don't know... There's well, well, they're not fans. They don't give a shit. And so, of course, uh, somebody who isn't emotionally invested in your dreams will sell them very cheaply. It's a shame. And it's a shame that they don't have enough professional pride in themselves or in the thing that they've been hired to adapt to do a good job of it. I think it's scummy. 
Absolutely scummy. Uh, thank you, Darkstar57. Samurai with a $2 super chat. Thank you, Samurai. Says, disappointed in Patrick Stewart. I don't think it hit me. Yeah, it, it just takes a minute to really kind of weigh the implications of, of what the guy is saying to really appreciate just how effed uh, the whole thing is, Samurai. And I'm sorry to have to call it to your attention, but I think it's very important to... Um, you know, acknowledge this to the world. You know what I'm saying? I think it's very important. Thank you, Samurai. Bionic Belly Button with a $2 super chat. Hail, Bionic Belly Button, who says, what would a Doomcock candle smell like? Oh, all sorts of really, really, really clever answers are coming to mind, but I think I will jettison all of them. Why, 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 why would you do that? Uh, discretion. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing. But uh, what would a Doomcock candle smell like? Probably uh, a napalm in the morning. That's what a Doomcock candle would smell like. Napalm in the morning. You get that gasoline smell up in your nose. Nothing else in the world smells like it. it smells like victory. That's what a Doomcock candle would smell like. Bionic belly button. Nee, 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 nee. Thank you very, very much for that. Samuel Rai with a ten dollars super chat. Thank you, Samuel Rai. Says F this. I took Roddenberry's vision for humanity to heart, not so different from religious people who expect an afterlife, and Stuart just shit all over it. Maybe idiocracy is going to be our true future. It would not surprise me at all, Samuel Rai. Would not surprise me at all. The indications are that people are getting stupider all the time. And that's the only way to explain. Just how shoddy popular culture has gotten uh, under their watch, you know, with soulless, uh, synthesized, auto-tuned garbage uh, rehashes of, of classic shows and, and films. Because these people lack imagination. They've had everything handed to them on a silver platter. They don't even have to wait for any of their gratification. It's just, uh, you know, you want to show, you look it up, boom, it's there. It's kind of like the uh, the Krell in Forbidden Planet, where things have gotten so easy, so lazy. I mean, those of us who were alive uh, when the internet was just in its infancy uh, had a a glimpse of, you know, how um, how the real world appeared to our ancestors. You know, you had to wait for things, you had to look for things. Uh, if they aired something, you had to show up for it, or you had to. If you had a VHS, of course, uh, you, you know you tape it. That's that's true, but you still had to wait. And commercials were not so easy to zap back then. Uh, it gives you a keener appreciation for the miracles of uh, of our modern technological world that they don't have. All they feel is impatience and entitlement, and uh, they've gotten lazy and stupid. And, and I don't see that trend reversing anytime soon. Thank you, Samurai. I, too, took Roddenberry's vision for humanity to heart. I really did. And and uh, for Stuart to just crap all over it and, and just dismiss it because it's like a whim to that son of a bitch, I find that deeply offensive. My new channel member, Grimmy, a.k.a. Grimy, with a $2 Australian super chat. Thank you, my friend. Says, yes, please, at Tyron BD, got my $10. Thank you so much, Grimmy, a.k.a. Grimy, a fellow Australian, to Tyron Beard, who threw down the gauntlet and challenged people to join my channel membership because, well, that's the kind of legionnaire pal he is. Thank you, Tyron Beard, and thank you, Grimmy, a.k.a. Grimy. So proud of you guys. You guys rock. Thank you for supporting my channel. Makes a big difference. Jay Paula 821 with a $2 super chat. Thank you, Jay Paula. Says, found out Wheaton upset his SJWs two years ago. LOL. Really? Oh, I'd like to hear that tale, Jay Paula 821. Why don't you uh, shoot me a line on that? You know how to find me. You're one of my legionnaires. Just DM me on Patreon. I'd like to hear the tale of how Wheaton went astray in the eyes of his SJW punklings. Thank you, J. Paula821. Catherine Greer with a two, two, two dollar super chats in a row. Thank you very much, Catherine Greer, who asks, any thoughts on Seth going to NBC? And then follows it up with, sorry if you have talked about it already. Look, um... I don't think it's good. 
I don't think it's good. I, I have not uh, spoken to any sources about it. Um, anything that pulls Seth MacFarlane's focus away from the Orville is a bad thing. And I just think that, you know, a bird in the hand is worth five in the bush, frankly. I, I think you've got this show that is building in momentum and is developing a, a deep fan base like Star Trek had. You'd be a fool. If you allowed it to follow the fate of the original Star Trek and only go three seasons and then try go chasing after uh, garbage on NBC, prime television network fare is tepid garbage. Almost always. Almost always. It may pay in the short term, Seth MacFarlane, but ultimately it's going to pay a lot more for you to stick with who brung you dance with who brung you, make entertainment with who brung you, and then stick it out. And in 10 years, you are a mogul controlling a Star Trek-sized empire. For God's sake, Seth, for God's sakes, please, please don't go down this road. Go ahead and develop shit for NBC. Take your $200 million, but do not abandon the Orville. Because if you do, you'll regret it. Maybe not today, and maybe not tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of your life. Makini90 with a $5 super chat. Hail Makini90, who says, We need to get to a point where quality is one of the factors of what will do well and sell well, along with good marketing. You mean like in the 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s? <laughs> you know, those old-fashioned values of quality and integrity? I, I I agree a thousand percent, Makini90. I could not possibly agree more. And, uh, oh my God, it really, quality should be the main factor. The main factor. Because without respect, we reject. And quality is inherently respectful. Quality is respectful to the audience. Quality is respectful to the property. And quality is respectful to ourselves when we do it. It shows that we respect our work. We, we, we value what we do. We value ourselves. And I think Hollywood is on a, like some kind of weird, twisted, uh, self-loathing kick where ultimately we're suffering for their self-loathing and their sins. And I, I find it absolutely reprehensible. Thank you, Makini90. Some nobody with a pair of two, two, two. $2 super chats in a row. Thank you, some nobody. Who says? Seth's kind of a playboy. Forced out, maybe? No, no, I don't think so. Not at all, uh, some nobody. I mean, if, uh, if they were forcing him out from Fox uh, because of some kind of pound me too stuff, uh, NBC isn't going to snatch up his contract. No, he, he got lured over because of more money. Because of his success, it's, it's got nothing to do with any kind of Playboy thing or Me Too thing. I, I, I would be extremely surprised. It would look different. It would manifest differently, some nobody. Uh, but that's an interesting idea. And then some nobody also says, Gary, you read my email about Hatsune Miku yet. Uh, I Unfortunately, I can't answer that. I don't know some nobody, but uh, I'll try to remember to uh, shoot him a... A question and see see if he uh, if he did that. Um, Dicks, uh, no, uh, JC with a five dollar super chat. Thank you, JC, very much for that. JC says thank you for all the great content, both of you. You are very welcome, JC. Thank you for your support. It means a lot to us. Dicks picks with a two dollar super chat. Thank you, Dicks picks. Who says my fear is Baby Yoda equals Ho Palpatine Returns. Oh, how Palpatine, how, it's H-O-E, but I, I think it's, Baby Yoda equals how Palpatine Returns. Uh, yeah, they're not going to do that, Dick's Picks. <clears throat> they're not going to do that. Uh, they, I mean, Baby Yoda is their, you know, bread and butter, their gold mine. I, there's no way that they're going to uh, turn Baby Yoda evil. It's just not going to happen. Not going to happen. Jesus. Baby Yoda's so cute. They're going to sell so many toys next Christmas. They're not going to do that. But uh, interesting idea. No, I, I think Palpatine is is basically Rey. Uh, Rey, uh, her eyes are going to start glowing yellow. I tr Trust me, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. 
They just didn't show it to us. It's one of the cuts that they made. <laughs> the whole thing is about Sheev Palpatine, start to finish. It was his saga, and we just didn't know it. So there you go. Mexican Iron Man with a $19.99 Superman. Uh, Superman. Super Chat from Mexican Iron Man. <laughs> with that $19.99 Super Chat. Very generous of you, my legionnaire and my spy. Mexican Iron Man says Emperor Gary and my Lord Doomcock slash Mexican Iron Man will be attending contact in the desert. I shall be special dressed like just another Mexican crossing the desert. And guess what? They'll never know my superhero identity. Bravo, Mexican Iron Man. Bravo. I just know that you and I are fated to meet one day, my friend. I don't know if it will be at contact in the desert or elsewhere, but I can tell you, it must happen. You have set me a place at your table. Someday, I will sit there. Hail Mexican Iron Man, and thank you for all of your support, brother. Catherine Greer with a $5 super chat. Thank you again, Catherine Greer. Says, we need a, a meme of Gary Barechested on the cover of his sci-fi romance. But now, after listening to butt humor from you guys, Jesus. <laughs> well, if I scared you away from wanting to see Gary Barechested on the cover of a sci-fi romance novel, uh, good, good. Mission accomplished. Nobody should see that. I mean, I, you know, I love Gary to death, but, you know, come on. I don't want to, I don't want to see that. Ugh. Uh, just, uh... It's just not, uh, savory? That, that's a good way to put it, Harvey. Savory. Savory. Thank you, Catherine Greer. And I, uh, yeah, the butt humor was, uh, ha, 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 almost stupid. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of stupid. Thank you, Catherine Greer. I hope that we amused you even as we repulsed you. Chris Nimitz with, uh, 10 PLNs. I wonder what PLNs are. I'll have to, I'll have to find out. All these denominations, they boggle my mind. But whatever they are, there are 10 of them. And Chris Nimitz, I thank you for that very much. And Chris says, Terry Matalas will be the new showrunner of Picard. Is this true? Have you heard this news or is this a joke? I'm not entirely sure who Terry uh, Matalas is. I guess I'll pop that into Google real quick and just, uh, just see uh, what comes up. Terry Matalas, American... Uh, Oh, a showrunner for MacGyver. Oh my God, you're absolutely correct. Terry Matalas as showrunner. MacGyver. Great. Great. Like one step above sitcom. Basically a shitcom. Wonderful. Oh, he has the deer in a headlight, headlights look of a, a, a true, true talent. And I'm sure he will guide uh, Star Trek Pew card to new heights. Oh, except the only thing is that that announcement is complete bullshit. They have not renewed season two of Star Trek Picard. They're only trying to produ uh, project confidence, uh, confidence that they should not project because this thing's going to bomb. So I am absolutely unconcerned, but amused by their foolishness. Thank you, Chris Nimitz for that. Ifrit0990 with a $5 super chat. Thank you, O oh Ifrit, who says, I feel as though all these woke writers decided to take a page out of Dragon Ball Evolution in terms of making content on stuff they know nothing about. Uh, that, well, it's not a feeling, dude. It's more than a feeling, to quote Boston. More than a feeling. It's, uh, it's a certainty. They, they, don't, they don't know anything about this shit. The uh, Lucasfilm Story Group, does not give a shit about Star Trek canon. I mean, Star Wars canon, excuse me. Uh, it might as well be Star Trek canon. I mean, they're the same groups of ideologically minded, uh, incompetent writers uh, just just uh, substitute uh, propaganda for talent and, and they don't give a damn about good, solid story construction, solid dramaturgy. Uh, these people, <laughs> they stink. That's just the way it is. They stink. And so, yeah, they're not going to take the time out of their busy drinking and carousing schedules, uh, allegedly, from them being in Hollywood, I assume, being in Hollywood Babylon, that this is the case. I don't know for sure. Uh, they just don't give a shit. It's just a job to them. 
They just want to get a paycheck, but really the best way to get a paycheck is to do quality work. Well, you know, they don't like doing it the old-fashioned way. They don't like earning it. Thank you, Ifrit0990. Adam Wofford with a $5 super chat. Thank you, Adam. Says, I was called racist by a co-worker. I said, I'm racist. Racist against Romulans. She said, they are not real. I said, I guess I'm not a racist then. Oh, you ran rings around illogically, Adam. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, you know, when somebody calls you a racist and, and then you say that, uh, I'm racist against Romulans. She said, they're not real. I said, I guess I am not racist then, you dumb bitch. See, I would have added those three lines just because I'm, you know, a super villain and toxic and I'm out of patience with this bullshit. You slander me as a racist. Uh, I'm coming back at you with whatever I feel like fucking saying to you because you have just like taken all the gloves off. The minute you throw the racist word at me, uh, all bets are off. I can call you whatever the fuck I want to in any language I want to and be justified. And that's what I would have said. But brilliant retort, Adam Wofford. Thank you, my Xanadu Mir and my friend. Adam W. with a $5 super chat. Thank you, Adam. Says, Nerdrotic, you and Bounding helped break. Let's topple every pale, male, and stale superhero. It was intentional. I, um... I think that I think it is. I think it's indisputable that these groups in uh, Hollywood and showbiz and in the media all blame white males. It's it's like you know not wabbit season. It's not duck season. It's white male season, and I'm sick to death of it. Thank you, Adam W. Some nobody with a two dollar super chat. Thank you, some nobody says we can replace Hollywood one day. Just take about a hundred years. <laughs> I, I don't think that long. I don't think that long. I think it could actually happen on an accelerated schedule. Evol time is speeding up. Evolution is speeding up. These radical changes can happen in the blink of an eye now and probably will at some point. Michael Watkins with a $10 Australian super chat. Thank you, Michael. Says, even if Star Trek returns to the hands of people who actually care, I will find it hard to come back unless they acknowledge what they have done, decanonize 2009 onward, and apologize to the fans. Yes, Yes, I, I agree with that assessment, Michael. I agree with that assessment. Uh, I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It, it will depend. It ha it's going to have to, it's going to basically be like, you know, directly proportional to how outstanding their work is. I mean, if they make something that is as great as Star Trek continues with respect and love, um, you know, I will consider that, inherently an apology inherently but uh absent that they got a hard long road ahead and they better mind their p's and q's and they better get it right because they are they are out of rope absolutely out of rope and they do need to apologize to the fans i i honestly think so tacitly explicitly i think we are due an apology and an explanation frankly Thank you, Michael Watkins, and hail to Australia. Blockheads with a 279 Canadian super chat. Thank you, Blockheads, the very talented Blockheads, who says, long live Phantom Menace. And our Lord Cecil. Cecil, I hope you saw that shout out. You rock, my friend. You, sir, rock. Trooper Bear, FN 2525, with a $5 super chat. Thank you, oh, Trooper Bear. Says, my liege, when are you going to do a Comic-Con or a Kamikaze? Would be nice to see you next to the Elvira booth. Oh, I'd be very happy to be next to the Elvira booth. That would be super damn cool. Jeez, see Elvira in person? Hmm, have to put a, a, a drool guard in my... In my, in my mask and wear a lobster bib, you know, because, you know, when you see Elvira, you know, it's a, your salivary glands kick into overdrive, you see. Uh, it turns me right into Woody Allen. Thank you, Trooper Bear FN 2525 and hail to Elvira. I don't know. I, um, I suspect I may be going to San Diego Comic-Con this year. Uh, I've also considered, mused about going to Emerald City but I, uh, I, I'm not sure I'll be able to. We'll have to see. But I will let you guys know. I will let you guys know. Though I will be uh, in disguise and will be appearing only, uh, you know, when I, um, 
when I choose, you know? Like a thief in the night, does Doomcock appear? Thank you, Trooper Bear, FN2525, Dixon Cider, with a $5 super chat. Thank you, Dixon, says, still owe you both the steak dinner of your choosing. I truly love the no-nonsense way you tell the truth. A couple of Ricky Gervaises. Wow. High praise indeed, Dixon Cider. High praise indeed. Thank you very, very much, my friend. It, it'll probably happen one day. It'll probably happen one day. It will just, uh, it will have to be uh, timed correctly and covert and uh, discreet. Thank you, Dixon Cider. Brian with a $1.99 super chat. Thank you, Brian, says the Picard Countdown comic is low-key good. I find that extremely hard to believe, Brian, but I do appreciate, sir, you listening on the Inquisition and your support of the channel with this $1.99 super chat. It helps. It helps. Every bit helps, you guys. Keeps us on the air, keeps us going, keeps the lights on around here. Extremely much appreciated, folks. Ryan Landis with a $5 super chat. Thank you, Ryan. Says, thanks for telling me about The Expanse. I binged four seasons and ordered the first book. I keep expecting it to take a turn and get dumb, but it doesn't. Not not so far. Not in four seasons has it gotten dumb. So I thank God for that. Because it's written by people who have talent and who care. It's that simple. Thank you, Ryan Landis. I'm proud of you for listening to us, for heeding our advice, and for watching The Expanse. God bless you, sir. Trooper Bear, FN 2525, with a $2 super chat. Thank you, Trooper Bear. It says, can Wonder Man Man save Picard from wokeness? Um, I don't think anything can save Picard from wokeness. Wonder Man Man, Wonder Woman Man, Wonder Dog Man, the Wonder Dog. I, nothing. It's it's woke, man. It's woke. It's pathetic, and I um, I, I just find it extremely depressing. I, I don't think anything is going to save this other than uh, the purifying uh, touch of fire on on every single copy. I think that might do the trick. Thank you, Trooper Bear, again for all of your support, my friend. Darth Gorbag with a $12.12 super chat. Thank you, oh, Darth Gorbag. Says, you guys are more than just entertainment to me. Because of you and the fandom menace ilk, YouTube is now a source of meaning in my relatively empty life. Thank you. Oh, you are very welcome, Darth Gorbag. But I, I trust and hope that your life is not nearly as, uh, as empty as you think it is. I hope not. And I am glad that we can be here for you. And, uh, you know, if you uh, ever need to contact me, uh, you certainly can at dictorvandoomcock at gmail.com or uh, over just DMing me on, on patreon.com slash doomcock uh, or subscribestar.com slash doomcock uh, and also on Twitter at doomcock. Thank you, Darth Gorbag. And I hope that 2020 will be so kind to you and so wonderful and so abundant that you will look back and marvel at the paucity of 2019. God bless you, my friend. Some Nobody with a $5 super chat. Thank you again, Some Nobody. Says, Japan's market is driven by cute stuff, but still has male entertainment. Difference here is that we brainwashed a generation to hate males and masculinity. Yep, well, I'm still going to keep being male, still going to keep being masculine, and if they don't like it, they can go fuck themselves. Isn't that right, Harvey? I believe that you are correct, oh, future ruler of Earth. Wow. Kind of kind of getting all Ed McManny on us, are you? Yeah, yeah, you are correct, sir. Yes. Wow. Harvey turning into Ed McMahon. Hey, now. And Hank Kingsley. I am blessed. Thank you, Sub Nobody. And finally, Dave Dahl with a $1.99 super chat. Thank you, Dave, says Hale. And can we please release Harvey on Kurtzman? Harvey, what do you think? Um, yes. Yes, I think I think we can. Uh, I, I think uh, if you just push the button, TM, TM, uh, all of your cares can, can go away. And every, oh, you can save the pitch. I'm not pushing the button. Run in hell, you bastard! Thank you, Harvey. Thank you, Dave Dahl. Thank you to all of you guys for supporting the Inquisition so generously last night that I had to do a Super Chat square up. But here it is, folks. No Super Chat is left behind. God bless all of you. 
and thank you for tuning in. Tune in next week to the Inquisition also on my channel this time because we skipped me for a week when Gary hit his big milestone. Uh, so we will be tuning in once again to talk about Picard and whatever madness erupts in the world of pop culture this week. From the center of the earth, this is Victor Van Doomcock bidding you all, my friends, oh yes, stay angry.